everyone and welcome back to another Krebs Coho replay cast. This time around we do an annihilation on the map Red Bull Express. So obviously that is a 3v3. I'm also accompanied by another fan collaborator this time around. He goes by the name London Smee. Welcome to the show. Hey, thanks Krebs. Good to be here. Okay, so that is London Smee. This time around, he's not from the land down under. I suppose you could say London is the land down under in comparison to where I live up here in Scotland. Um, but yeah, he's not too far away from me, and hence the UK accent. Okay, so what we're going to be doing today is doing an Annihilation, as I said. It's also going to be one of my games that I played just today. Um, it features me and two of my friends versus uh, three other people and I believe they were a team because they were actually cooperating very very effectively and plus at the end they, um, well I won't ruin it, they were probably a team. Okay so I'm going to be focusing on as the Wehrmacht and the PE and London Smee is going to be taking care of the Americans up north. Okay so are you ready London? Yeah I'm ready. Okay, and we're also starting at six seconds, so in three, two, one, and go. Seven, eight, nine, and ten. Okay, I think it's only courteous for me to uh, introduce you a little bit to the show. So how did you come up with uh, London Smee? Hopefully this isn't putting you on the spot. <laughs> oh, that's quite simple. I used to use the, the name Smee, you know, it's me, and calling in, and... There are so many Smees about, I ended up, I thought, well, I'll, I'll take London, because it's quite easy. Even though I tended to use, with a uh, cover hole and line, like Smee Air and Smee, Smee, Smee Armour and stuff. But um, generally, it's it's easier, and you know where I come from. Well, obviously London, right? Mm. Hence the whole accent, London. Yeah. Pretty cool. Um, yeah, Bermondsey boy. <laughs> I feel like I should also tell everyone that um, there's quite an age gap between us. Obviously, we're not going to take this into consideration um, during this cast, but I mean, there is this sort of age gap between us. You are 44 years old, correct? Yeah, 44 young. See? Yeah, that's okay. There you go. Exactly. I'm, 40, I'm 20 uh, years old and you're 44 years young, right? The thing that is quite interesting about this channel, um, I've mentioned this in a previous replay, but... Uh, from the demographics, the statistics of this uh, channel, actually a high majority, actually the majority of uh, people that watch these videos are the people in your age range, in your age range, and the second biggest are people in my age range. So there really is quite a big diversity in just who watches these videos, and just, no, there's nothing weird about it whatsoever. If you enjoy the cast, then you enjoy the cast, right? Okay, so let's focus on the game and just see what's going on at hand. So what is the Americans up to at the moment? Okay, well, it, it's, at the moment, it's sort of like doing a lot of back capping and coming forward. They're trying to put some pressure in the middle section, which is really good to see, because Red Bull which should really have a lot of pressure on the, <laughs> the middle fuel points. <clears throat> um, you've got build orders gone, two weapon supports and one racks, um, one barrack centre. Which is pretty cool, I would say. Um, the nice thing about Red Bull... It's, I suppose it is quite a large map, but the thing you have to consider is that it's 3v3, so just the fact that you have six players on it makes it quite smaller in a way. So by having one barracks out, uh, they can do like the majority of the capping. Likewise, the people with the WSC, they'll have those extra engineers on the side who can do the capping. And so those snipers and stuff can actually focus on the actual fighting. So that's pretty cool that they're doing the mix-up, you know, two WC, one uh, barracks. They're actually losing kind of a little bit of guys in the beginning, but that's because we were being so frontal in our pushes, just trying to just uh, chase them off as soon as possible. Uh, they, it seems a bit silly, like, oh, if they're losing these this amount of guys in the beginning, hey, they must be bad. Uh, I assure you guys not, uh, at least later in this game, they did push us quite a bit, and they are quite good players. It doesn't seem like it right now, but just hold on, hang in there. <laughs> okay. Right, well... Yeah, it's... On you go. Well, um, Faces ended up, he, he brought an MG up a bit too forward, you know, he, he brought it in front of his sniper. He should really have his sniper in front, 
giving it a lot more visual range with it. Like it's doing a better job now in the middle section. Always got to be careful with the snipers. You always always need to keep them backed up. Um, the lucky thing is is that me and Rolo are um, both PE. Rolo, by the way, is one of my friends as well. Sergey uh, is another commentator or something to do his collaborations with. Um, so they're both my friends. But it's a good thing that me and Rolo both went to uh, PE, for example. If there was just three Wehrmacht, it would be so easy for us to get motorcycles out on the field and just counter those snipers, no problem. But as PE, one of the most notorious and difficult things is to actually being able to counter a freaking sniper. It's the hardest, one of the hardest tasks to do. Snipers are just... The, uh, such a pain in the behind for a PE player. Um, hmm. Well, they're moving up the right hand side. That's pretty good. Yeah, they're, they're moving up to the right, but they've got nothing really stopping them. It's just two engineers. But you, you're saying about the uh, countering snipers as um, PE. If you've got somebody who goes um, Luftwaffe, it's always useful to get a camouflaged uh, cannon craft mm -hmm. up there. Its detection radius is a lot better than the actual snipers. But still, one of the one of the really frustrating things about a PE player is just the fact that you have to go for Luftwaffe then to actually counter. Uh, sniper. I mean, you can get other stuff such as scout cars and stuff, but still, it doesn't seem like a perfect counter to actually take on snipers, for example. Mm -hmm. um, likewise, for example, if you have Wehrmacht, they can just easily get a motorcycle, which is very speedy and stuff like that. Likewise, they could also get a sniper, another sniper, and that makes it really easy. Mm -hmm. But for the PE, just very, very difficult. Killing a single guy in a squad can effectively annihilate a third of that effectiveness. Um, well, I just want to quickly mention what my build order is. I've got four PG squads. I usually do this when I'm playing as a Panzer Elite. Uh, I go for four PGs, and then my first and second retreating guys, I usually use them to build a Kampfgruppe company. In this game, particularly, I'm going for Kampfgruppe company, jumping up to the uh, Panzer Jaeger Command, and going to be getting a armored car. Armored car is good at taking on stuff. Obviously, <laughs> the... Uh, Riflemen particularly, and also killing, chasing down snipers. What else do we have from the Americans, though? Well, at, at the moment, the, the only one that's really progressed in his face in the middle, he's just put up um, a supply depot. Um, not actually seeing... Well, he's only got 30, not 40 fuel, so I'm presuming he's going to be coming out with an attempt at fast M8s, or whatever he uses. Um, I'd like to see, considering the amount of infantry out there, possibly a half-track would be quite nice. Oh, that's a good idea. <laughs> now, when you're because playing it... when you're playing an actual game, like say 1v1 or team games, what do you usually like going by? Because you told me that you're more of an allied player, sort of, you know, what do you usually like going for, WSC or barracks? I'd, I've got to go old school on the barracks, really. You know, a WSC is good, but you've got to be really good with snipers. You've got to be hot on your, your keys for hot keying and knowing when to fire and when not to. And in the situation, you've got Wehrmacht, you've got motorbikes riding about, it's going to be very difficult for the Allies. Whereas if you've got riflemen, you can put down a lot of pressure. Oh, we've got a bad little route going on on the left-hand side. Um, Face has sent his troops back. Uh, they could really have done with possibly putting a forward HQ up in the the left hand, uh, the the western uh, villa, no, by the actual mm. big statue of the horse. On <laughs> oh, do you mean on the eastern front? Uh, yes. Where uh, the horse is, sorry. yeah. You're That's... watching it. Yeah, yeah, where the horse is, the the villa. Yeah, the eastern that, that front. That is yeah. a perfect forward head. Yeah, that's a perfect um, forward headquarters if you can get that up for resupplying your men. Because this, this this map is just too big, and and now they've got men's X zone's got uh, 20, nearly 20 men just sitting at his base, and he's got more riflemen running back. So mm. you've got no infantry on the far left hand side, and you just got you you advancing. Well, there you go. I mean, I've actually pushed them back quite a bit on the left-hand side, uh, where, you know, all these guys, these guys are. I've actually managed to chase them away, and I brought my armored cars there, thinking, hey, armored cars will be perfect at just holding, making an offensive line here. Um, but, you know, 
but being by yourself is a difficult task. Sometimes you can hold off, but as soon as you start getting ganged up, for example, it can really tear apart your lines. Uh, you guys will see that uh, momentarily. Right hand side is being capped away by Rolo, so the allies are quite pushed back at the moment. They're severely cut off, yet they're still they're still putting up quite a massive fight. Uh, they still got multiple guys out on the field. We've also got uh, paratroopers just coming down from face as well, so uh, that's good. It's also got yeah, we got got a, yeah, we got one tough track to just come out by Sergeant Mike, but uh, he he's managed to catch up on face. Who's now bringing out a, a, like t building up a T17? Mm. Not my most favourite vehicle of the um, the Allies, but it's still quite effective. It's got good armour. T17. Mm. Yeah, I know it is quite a big debate <laughs> what you're going to go for T17 or M8. Well, obviously they have those pros and cons. We were actually talking about this slightly earlier about what we prefer. You love those mines, don't you? Oh, de definitely. It, 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 it's so more effective, and the, the idea of if in doubt, chuck one down, and if you get blown up, there's a suicide attempt, which is quite fun. <laughs> yeah, suicide attempt. So, Blow up your own uh, M8. <laughs> uh, oh, God. Massive casualties on the right hand side of the Americans. Wow, they lost quite a bit of guys there, yeah. just charging in. But now this is my left-hand side front getting absolutely torn apart. Now they've got they've got a T17 in there. I've got a few Panzer Shreks. However, there's they've got snipers here. Look at that, two snipers, three snipers actually, just picking away at my guy. So whatever my AT was supposed to be is just getting absolutely mauled apart right now. My armored cars are getting destroyed because they've got recoilless rifles and that T17 along with that M M3. I believe I actually lost both of my uh, armored cars here, so that is a big loss for me. I just have to retreat, but that's that's the power of ganging up. <laughs> mm, that looked like it hurt. Uh, cut me back entirely. So everyone is retreating. Their brothers and comrades dead. <laughs> it's not looking good for them. Uh, I've also gone for Luftwaffe. The reason I go, go for that is because I actually particularly like the fact that um, you have guys out on the field who just... Uh, have it do such a superb job of repairing. I suppose you could also go for advanced repairs from Kampfgruppe Company. Usually I go for Luftwaffe if I get logistics and no Kampfgruppe Company. Um, but but I don't know, i just done so in this uh, game. Just want to do something a little bit different. But Americans are making a comeback, it seems like. Hmm. Well, your, your Rallo's done a great job on the, sort of like the right-hand side. He's really pushed forward. He's just taken out the... the um, Command point taking out the the fuel from the corner, and you got a kit and craft. Um, your kit and craft, which has made its way all the way down the the right hand side, which is which has probably been very annoying. You, he's done a great job of using his actual Panzer elites to fight, and not just to cap. Um, you've you got one doctrine at the moment, which is um, face has gone airborne, and it's sort of like still waiting to see what the other ones come out with but there's a lot of waiting around at the minute the airborne is mm. pretty good i mean he's got it so early and he's just destroying everything i mean he took out my he took out my uh, armored cars as you guys can see there's two kills on the uh airborne uh paratroopers on the left hand side for example they're doing a really good job uh i'm just trying to recap what they've managed to take away from me just splitting up my guys Right now they're sort of moving in a blob, but they'll be splitting up quite shortly just to uh, maximize their effect. But um, mm. they're doing a pretty they're doing a pretty good job. Otherwise, I mean they're capping away the center side as well. Uh, they've actually got one of the fuel points in the center, and they're capping away at the other one. I don't know. Folks has just sent a T seventeen into the middle of a lot of blob. Of PEs, he's backed him up with infantry, but it's, it seems very dangerous. It's, there could have been so easily been some anti-tank there on the, the uh, your right-hand side. Oh God, Rollo's getting torn apart on the right-hand side. I think that T17 is really making a difference there. Oh wow, was that like a was that a a grenade or something like an anti-tank grenade he just threw? I think it was. Yeah, it must have been. I mean, uh, he's got logistics company, so he must have gotten AT grenades and thrown one at the T-17 because it took a huge chunk of damage there. It's also a vet too, so that's pretty cool. Extra health. 
you know, uh, it's nice to see him getting the engineers on there repairing. Um, the only thing is, you got uh, Mard has just turned up. It's too <laughs> close, I think. Really, we I need know, to be I, back I, a lot. He's, he's not even caring about the riflemen. Maybe he's just thinking, oh, my probably the riflemen probably don't even have stickies. Who cares about them? But I don't know. I, I, I can't understand. You should be careful. I think um, face would have been useful to actually use like a phosphorus round on that Marder three. Oh, I uh, think I know he's got exactly. He's got two T17s there. Why, I don't know instead what he's, of that, what he's thinking about that. I know. Instead of retreating that uh, the T17s, what he could have actually done was use a phosphorus round. That would have been just as effective. And mm. having the recoilless rifles and uh, bars nearby could just tear apart that Marder. Mm. I'm wondering if he sort of like tried moving back one, but moved the group. Sometimes that happens, you know, you, you try and retreat the one back, and you, it would have been good to send his, his first one. He's un, unharmed, like his, his virgin um, T-17 forward to try and get the phosphorus kill on that, and then repair his other one. I could have done uh, that. Um, it's quite a few things. Sergei um, has gone for his Panzer Command, so he's actually skipped right on up from... Uh, T1 to T4. That's why he's got uh, two uh, Panzer IVs out on the field, which is pretty good, uh, considering we've had a quite a... Uh, What's that? I was going to say, no, it's, it's beautiful to see some Panzer IVs out there. Um, you love so them. much infantry. It's a, that's, a per that's a perfect decision to bring out onto the field. He, he just needs to get them to Vet 2 as quick as possible. <laughs> got quite a sniper fight going out in the center. Look at that. Oh my god! Three snipers versus three snipers. Sergey's already lost one. Ah, oh, the motorcycle just went down there. Man, it's such a standoff, so tense when you've got uh, snipers versing each other. God. But yeah, it looks like I've got the um, Panther Battle Group out. Just the nice thing about having a fuel advantage most of the game, like we've managed to hold uh, the fuel points. Actually quite a long time they did manage to cap away a few of them but we've managed to um, hold on in there and so that basically let me get the Kampf group uh, Panzer Sport Command and Panzer Jaeger and then upgrade all of those get the Panther Battle Group as soon as possible and you know I was being pushed back there obviously you saw my armored cars go down for example and all I had was left was infantry so rather than keep on building armored cars what I decided was hey I'll just go for a Panther Battle Group I'll get a bigger oomph a bigger sort of fist and there we go, I've got uh, two Panthers out, but they're already injured. They've got a defensive line. These Americans have a very solid defensive line. Snipers uh, and AT guns. Yeah, I can see your um, your little cat craft sneaking down behind, getting rid of the munitions with the allies. <laughs> Trying to, but then there's an observation point. Uh <laughs> I was trying to do that quite a few times. Like a lot of people, what they sort of do is forget about the Kentcrad, but the Kentcrad is actually one of the most valuable units you can have in uh, for the Panzer Elite, just because your guys, your Panzer Grenadiers, are always moving about and fighting. For example, so they don't they don't have time to cap, um, let alone just how slow they do cap. For example, so that Kentcrad just always use it to harass. For example, if you got uh, if you got flanks that are open, your opponent has flanks that are open, then just go along that side and start decapping their points. It just means they have to focus there and recap it. Yeah, I, th I think you're saying the Allies have got a good defensive line. I think the big problem at the moment is the Allies are fighting on their own ground. They're not even at 50%, so this is really starting to hinder their advancement it's just giving you more and more time it'd be interesting to see how they, how they can try and counter this <laughs> i hear when i'm actually watching a replay like this right now because usually when i'm watching the when i'm playing a game like this it was actually so tense it, was, it, was, it actually felt like they had a lot of guys i'm sure you feel this as well like you always feel like your opponent has a lot of men out on the field and you're just barely holding on in there and that's how i felt like during the game but now when i'm watching this replay i feel like oh maybe i'm actually <laughs> like maybe it was nothing. Maybe I'm just absolutely uh, raging through these guys. I don't know. Well, the feeling was different. Yeah, <laughs> I would like like to see him sort of like try and move his snipers up as a bit more recon as well. You know, give a bigger f um, view range for those AT guns. It, I know you, there's other snipers out, but you know you got to risk it for the biscuit occasionally. And there should be some more air recon going over there, highlighting. 
There should definitely be more, um... Snipers should be definitely getting in there. There, I don't think Sergei actually has any more snipers. Um, I think they were actually all killed. But, uh, the snipers getting on in there, seeing what's going on. Maybe even dropping a few artilleries on us if we didn't even know, uh, if we weren't even looking at the field at that time. For example, that might always be good. But, um, hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Not sure. Well, they're moving up along the left-hand side. Uh, Sergeant Mike obviously has that def the armor doctrine because he's actually capping away with the T-17s. So actually, look how fast they're capping away. That's pretty damn fast. Not bad. Hmm. I think it'd be nice if um, the the two other airborne car commanders now, because we've got two airborne and one armor, if you could actually drop some airborne up there to literally try and break your your stranglehold of the center and you know, put some added pressure up there like he's managed to force um two panzers and uh, what uh, f three units to from the back but you got no pressure no movement in the middle so all that distraction hasn't really worked out that well i mean yeah he's just uh, totally capping away at the left hand side but the thing is, like, uh, I mean, he's capping with the left-hand side and he's distracting us and that. But the thing is, when he's doing that, I think he should also be f moving in along the center side, for example. Uh, because now that just left me a great opportunity to just, hey, go on the left-hand side, take out those T-17s, and then I could just go back into the center again. Uh, because there's nothing actually doing it. He's not actually... Um, moving in on the center so if he was actually uh moving in on the center then hey i would have to focus on the center take out the guys that are moving in over there and then he would still be capping away on that western side of the map so that's what he should be doing but anyway big movement of mm. paratroopers on the right hand side two snipers and three recoilless rifles also some t-17s yeah. oh and stunning one of them actually stunning the ostwind Oh, definitely. Oh, that's beautiful. That that's nice to see. That, to actually give them the chance, taking out that Oswin's now going to put a lot of pressure on on the Axis. Is there? I'd be surprised if he even stays around. Sergio's being sensible, moving back his uh, Panzer IV. Yeah, he's trying oh, to triple snipers. He needs to get out of there. Oh, but the Panzer IV is gone. <laughs> so it looks like the only losses that the Americans took was actually losing one T17 from an armored. Uh, a lot losing one T seventeen. But the um but the airborne are pretty smart. The Americans are pretty smart and they're actually destroying the Rex as well. Just so that we can't actually salvage them or use a Burger Tiger, for example. Has any Burger Tiger been seen yet? Well, I haven't seen any at the moment, so it, but it's it's a sensible tactic to actually do. He's he's spreading out and actually taking the left hand side and trying to decap the actual house. Now, I'm a bit worried here because Sergei was actually pushed quite a bit. He lost a few tanks. Rolo is non-existent on the right-hand side. I'm the only one that's actually anywhere. And what I actually do is move in across the hedges with my Panthers, make a big hole. Because these guys were just facing towards the middle there. And it just left such a great opportunity to just make a hole and come in right behind them with my full Shim Jaegers. Uh, my Panthers just rip a huge hole in their um, line right there. They weren't even expecting that, I believe. Totally valid, totally valid. I really don't see anything from Sergei at the moment. I mean, he's only got one Panzer IV on the field and a sniper, and that's pretty much it. Mm. Just that um, X-Zone, just take up um, a supply drop instead of possibly taking a uh, strafing run, which I think was a, a bit of a mistake. Unless he's going to supply up face so he can do some, some strafing runs. Hmm. <laughs> well, Rollo was actually using quite a bit of infantry, so maybe maybe he was quite happy with the quite happy with um, you know going for the strafe run because Rollo had just so much freaking uh, infantry on the field. But then again, the area drop supply drops is only what a, a hundred manpower or something like that, and you get quite a bit of ammunitions and fuel. I think that actually probably would have been a better choice. Yeah. I've, I really do think you need to get your men, uh, your, your Panthers out there. You just lost one. I know. I just uh, that was pretty bad. I wasn't really happy about that. <laughs> um, 
lost one. I, I know, I, was, I, moved, I moved in on them. I took out that whole defensive line across the hedges, and then I was thinking, hey, maybe I just destroyed their entire line. Maybe I'll just keep on moving in. And then this big swarm of uh, paratroopers and riflemen come out of nowhere. So I was thinking, let's back up into one of the uh, butterfly bomb minefields that I made earlier in the game. But, uh... Yeah, that, that was some nice reversing there. Trying to, anyway. <laughs> Now, what really frustrated me in this game was I actually called on the Panther Battle Group twice, and what kind of frustrated me was I believe in my second Panther Battle Group I only got a single Panther from it. Um, I'm not 100% certain of that, but I believe I only got one Panther because I just couldn't even find that other Panther on the field. It wasn't even destroyed. Very frustrating thing to be sometimes. I remember this uh, used to happen in previous to 2.602, where people actually would call on Panther Battle Group and maybe only one would come out. Quite frustrating. Oh, mass battle in the middle section. Oh, yeah. Um, you still need some strafing runs. See, a strafing run there would have been lovely. 197 <laughs> fuel. I know, look at all the guys right there. Uh, and he's got his snipers um, way back. Oh god, this wow! Should whoa, be interesting. Whoa, I mean, I'm glad to see suppress them, suppress them, suppress them down. Look at that! The, no. That mob is just asking. Rolo's really asking for a strafing run right now. God, I think they're probably a bit low on munitions. I imagine. Uh. You know, one of the good things about airborne is uh, not a lot of people think about this, but you can actually combine arms with airborne. So if two people go airborne, for example, one can go up the uh, uh, up the left-hand side and get the air drop, supply drops, one can go up the right-hand side and get a uh, storm troop or a uh, strafing run. And so you can actually be supplying them the air drop, supply drops, give them the f uh, necessary munitions, and then they can be calling on the strafing run. What was something he, he just did a strafing run, which was lovely, Just to, and he managed to end up getting half the uh, attacking force <laughs> literally in retreat. Sergei's ended up falling back. I know Rolo's my friend, but I'm actually quite happy to see his blob take massive casualties. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now that's true friendship, to see your friend get hurt. <laughs> <laughs> he was asking for it. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Oh, now th this, is, this is a bit of a worry for the Allies. You've got a repair centre right in the middle, and you've just brought up... Um, a Hummel, so you, this could be a very painful situation, lots of artillery. Mm. Well, I think it's uh, just near <sighs> the end to them, I mean, they're losing a lot of guys. Um, and I'm calling on, uh, yeah, the Henschel, for example, we're just going to be wrecking havoc on their few uh, armoured vehicles over here that they have left. I think the Henschel should do a little bit more, to be honest. I mean, it only attacks vehicles, but I just think that it should do a bit more, such as attack AT guns, for example. I don't know, I just get that impression, because, you, if, you know, right here, there's only two two vehicles, and it only works in a small selected area. Yeah, but isn't it the visual range around the actual, um, the targeting actual area, and it's well, uh, 13 I... bomb attacks, isn't it? 13 bombs? 13 bombs? Oh, I have no idea. Well, if you mean, like, the actual circle of what it works in, like, you can see it on the mini-map when that circle's up. That's where it attacks. Uh. Well, it looks like one Ostvind went down, but Sergei still has another one out on the field. And I'm just pushing on what's left. Well, seems like uh, Exxon is moving along the right-hand side. He's actually got two Veteran C2 squads. Rifleman, so that's really good that he has that. But uh, surprisingly, we weren't even expecting this, but they actually called down a good game. That is actually the end of the playback. Um, so it wasn't Annihilation, it was just, there was no VPs, obviously it was just a basic match. Um, but they actually all dropped at the same time there. Um, I do believe that's the reason why they were a team, just because they decided all to give in at the same time. But um, I don't know, we weren't expecting that. We thought they'd still have you know, quite a bit uh, out on the field, they can still do a push, but then again, we had loads of tanks, veteran C P for example, loads of guys, I think it was just probably the end of that. So, I believe this replay was more so just to show you guys of how we play, rather than, um, you know, here's a tide of war and it's going back and forth, just more so showing you guys of what my games are like.
Um, any closing comments? Do you think? Where do you think the Americans went wrong? Um, but it's the old car home with the actual center with Red Bull Express. It's the fuel. You you had too much fuel, so you were able to do basically what you wanted. You brought out so much armor in the end, they couldn't do anything with it, and they were they were running back so often with all this infantry that. It, they could have done with like a forward HQ on the left hand side or, or the middle building. They, they were fighting on the back foot always and that, that's just going to end up in pain. Yeah, I think it's just again a fuel, a fuel race. Basically we had the fuel almost the entire game that allowed us to get um, teching up and tanks and all that stuff and that just allowed us to push in on them. Well anyway, uh, it was nice doing collaboration cast with you, uh, London. <laughs> and Hopefully we will get to it again sometime soon. Well, it was a pleasure. Thanks for the invitation. It's been very enjoyable. Okay. Happy gaming. So until next time, guys. Hope you all have a nice day. And bye-bye. <laughs>